So what is the biblical perspective of our heavenly father towards his children? Let's read Matthew chapter three, verse 16 and 17. It says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him. He saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I love this picture. When Jesus was being baptized, the Holy Spirit coming down upon Jesus, the father's voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, I have good news for you today. All of us who've been saved, who've asked Jesus to come into our hearts to cleanse us from our sin, guess what? Our heavenly father this morning is saying to us, you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Isn't that good news? Every morning when we wake up, the first thing we should hear is our Heavenly Father's voice speaking to us saying, you are my beloved child. You're my beloved son, my beloved daughter. I am well pleased with you. That would change our life, wouldn't it? If we began to really grab a hold of the identity of who we really are now that we uh, belong to Jesus. Amen? It would change us we would realize how much he loves us. I love this quote by Bill Johnson. He says that I cannot afford to have any thought in my mind about me that is not in his. Isn't that true? Our heavenly father loves us. He's well pleased with us. I want to encourage you this morning. You are a son, you are a daughter of God. He loves you, he's well pleased with you. I want you to turn to someone and say, your heavenly father is well pleased with you. (laughs) <laughs> sometimes Isaiah my four year old uh, son I'll, I'll tell him I'll say Isaiah I try to do this every couple of days I'll say Isaiah I love you daddy loves you so much and he'll say I know <laughs> i say well why does daddy love you he says I don't know I says because you're my son in whom I'm well pleased And I believe that's something that the Lord wants to really, in these days when the harvest is so great, whether in Elmira and Niger, all across the world, the, the harvest is white. But as the sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father, we need to realize our identity, that our Heavenly Father is well pleased with us. He loves us, we're His sons and daughters. And as we become more secure in our identity in Him, He can use us more effectively in the relationships around us. Your heavenly father is well pleased with you. I want you to just, just receive the father's love this morning. That's all we have to do is receive it. Say, thank you, father, for your, lo- your love. Thank you for how much you love me. I just received that love. Sometimes it's very hard and difficult to just receive something. Isn't that true? Or am I the only one? I like to do things to earn it. I like to work at the end of the day to, um, to feel like, oh, this is my reward. <laughs> how many realize that when God the father told Jesus when he came up from the waters of baptism, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. How many realized that this was before Jesus had gone into the wilderness and passed the test the devil gave him? How many realized that this was before Jesus did any miracles, before his public ministry started, before he went to the cross? Now, if, you know, for me, if I was the father, I would probably wait until Jesus was on the cross and right about then I would be saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But Praise God, our Heavenly Father is not like us, amen? As soon as we give our life to Jesus, we accept what he did on the cross to pay for our sin. We repent for our sin, we make him our Lord and Savior. At that moment, we become a child of God. He becomes our Heavenly Father. We become a son and daughter of God. And at that moment, every day we should hear from him, you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter, in whom I'm well pleased. I want to encourage you this morning. We have to begin to fill our minds and our hearts and our spirits, not with what we think we are, but who our Heavenly Father says we are. He is well pleased with us. He loves us. He loves you this morning. So as a son or daughter of God, what are some of the, what's the attitude that we should have towards our Heavenly Father? In John 5, chapter 19, it says, Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. 
In this verse, it just gives us a reflection that Jesus was completely dependent upon his heavenly father. Everything that he said, everything that he did. How many here as parents realize that your children will usually copy you, the things that you do or say? <laughs> I had never realized that until I became a father. And I, be, I began to have children running around and I'd hear them say thing when they, things when, they, weren't, when I, they didn't think I was listening. I'd be like, wow, I just said that a few hours ago. <laughs> And sometimes it's like, wow, I'm so proud for, of what they're saying. I really taught them well. Other times it's like, whoa, <laughs> I need to work on that. <laughs> but children just naturally copy their parents. They copy their father, their mother. And that's the biblical role of a true son or daughter. They copy their father and their mother. And you and I are to be so completely dependent upon our Heavenly Father that we begin to say the things that he's saying to our spouse to our children. How many realize if our heavenly father, if we get up in the morning, he says, you're my beloved son or daughter in whom I'm well pleased. How many realize that as a son and daughter of God, we need to begin to open our mouth and let that flow of our families. Say to our children, say to our, our wife or husband, I love you. Say to our children, our sons and our daughters, I'm well pleased with you, I love you. Not because of what you do, but because of who you are. You are my son, you are my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Amen? We could begin to spread that with coworkers, with um, other fellow Christians, wherever the Lord has placed us. When we begin to get in tune with what our Heavenly Father is saying, we begin to believe Him for who He says we are that releases us to begin to pronounce that word in our families and those around us to be able to tell them who our Heavenly Father views them as. Amen? This world needs to have sons and daughters of God Most High, all around us in the, co in the workplace and in the church, we need to have a real identity of who we are because the world is dying and lost. They need the love of God. And you and I are to be that in this world. Amen? Amen. So I want our, our good prayer every day is to say, Father, what are you doing? Just like Jesus did every day. Father, what are you doing? Uh, it's been helpful to us to realize this because living in Niger, there's so many needs around us. And how many, I've just realized recently that Jesus didn't go around just trying to meet needs every day. He went around doing what his father was doing every day. What his father was saying. If, if the father said, this is this crippled person, I'm going to heal him. He went up, he spoke the word and saw healing. And we've seen that in Niger. We've seen some awesome things of God healing people, saving people. But there's so many needs around us. So our heart has been, Father, what are you doing today? Whose life are you touching that we can, you can use us to touch them? What are you saying that we can say? And I want to encourage you this morning, this next week, as you go to your workplace or as in, your, in your home, I want to encourage you to pray that prayer in the morning. Say, Father, what are you doing today? What are you saying today to my coworker, to this family member, so that I could be your voice to them? Amen? Jesus was completely dependent upon his Father. And you and I, as a son and daughter of God, were called to be dependent upon him. Now, how, what are some of the things that mold us more into the image of Christ? that mature us as sons and daughters. And <laughs> um, one, of the, one of the ways is found in James chapter one, verse two through four. We're in this process of becoming more mature as sons and daughters of God. And one of the first things that produces a character in our lives is found in James chapter one, verse two through four. It says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So how many have come to the point where trials, we consider them joy? <laughs> I'm getting there, but it's, it's, I don't typically have a trial that I just say, wow, that just made my day. <laughs> So I still have a ways to go here with the perseverance factor. <laughs> in Niger, we've had a couple, the Lord's really increased us in this area because living in a third world country, you have a lot of different times of uh, the Lord just increasing your faith. One area specifically with our family, our children got really sick about a year ago. They had about 105, 106 degree temperatures for a couple weeks in a row. Uh, about a week of not eating, a couple days not drinking. And we live in a place where we see a lot of children die. It's just, that's the way it is. And um, we've seen the Lord actually write, uh, raise some from the dead. It's been awesome. But they're just a fact of life when you live in a, a country like Niger. And it's been very difficult to see that. But our children got really sick. We actually saw the look in their eyes that we've seen in some of our friends who've lost some children. And, and um, so we just began to pray. How many realize that a trial just brings you on your knees? A, a complete dependence is nothing like a trial to get you into the secret place to be dependent upon the Lord. And how many realize there's actually no better place to be? And that's what trials do. They 
make us dependent upon the Heavenly Father. We, we cast ourselves upon Him. When we began, my wife and I would spend every night just praying over our children, laying hands on them, proclaiming life, abundant life, healing. And after a couple of weeks, it began to get better. But from that experience, looking back, we realize now the Lord is dealing in our life, knowing that He is our healer. He's our provider. We can trust Him as our Father when we come into that place of dependency. I want to encourage you, if you're in a trial right now, remember, we just, as a son and daughter of our Heavenly Father, He just wants us to come and be dependent upon Him. And as we're dependent upon Him, He can just work His will in and through our life. Amen? Another example is uh, one time we're driving a Land Cruiser. We live nine hours away from the airport. There's only one airport in Niger. We live nine hours away it's, um, in the desert. And one time, one time we're driving a Land Cruiser, we had a visitor uh, with us. We're driving back. Uh, we're about halfway through, four hours into the trip. And all of a sudden, I heard a big thump in the back of our Land Cruiser. And how many realize that's not a good sound? How many realize we don't have AAA? <laughs> so we began to pray. I pulled over. I got underneath our, ve- our vehicle, and uh, the shock in the back had come down, jammed into the tire. It was taking the tread out of the tire, and the tread was about halfway worn off. And with both hands, I could push the shock back up. But then we just fall back down again. I told my wife, I was like, I don't know what to do. We have to pray. So we began to pray. And then she, as a woman of faith, looked up and saw a couple of iron uh, poles sticking out of this little hut. She said, maybe they have a lag bolt for what you need. Because <laughs> the shock had been held up by this um, bolt. The bolt had fallen off over some of the bumpy roads. And that was what I needed to fix the shock. So um, <laughs> my wife was like, maybe you'll find what you need over there. And, and I looked at her like, uh-huh. <laughs> Look where we're at, desert. You're not going to find a Toyota part in a hut, you know? Our vehicle itself came from Europe. Uh, in the middle of Niger, it's all sand, camels around us, nomadic people, and you know, here we are stuck. And so I went up to this little, um, this little hut, and I, I went through all the greetings. In Africa, you have to greet a lot. I went through all the house of greetings, and then they sent a 15-year-old boy with me, and they, ca- they came over. He got underneath the vehicle. He came back, and I spent about 10 years in carpentry. I used to be a, a foreman in a building a construction company, and I could tell when this young man came back, the size bolt he was holding in his hand was about twice the size of what I needed. So even as he was coming back to a land cruiser with a bolt, I was like, you know what, that's not going to work. <laughs> so I told my wife, we have to be praying because I know Africa and we would probably be just by the side of the road the rest of the day. <laughs> so we began to pray, praying in the spirit, pray, 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 and he, this young man came out again. This time I didn't even bother to get under the vehicle, but um. He was underneath our vehicle for about 10 minutes. And when I finally was like, what is taking him so long? So I went underneath there, and he was just finishing cranking that lag bolt into place, holding our shock up underneath a Land Cruiser. He turned to me, and he said, in Hausa, I found a bolt for you. Now, how many realize that increases your faith? As a son and daughter of a heavenly father, in the middle of the desert, your Land Cruiser breaks, and within 20 minutes, the exact part that you need that just fell off is actually found in this little hut. I mean, how many realize that really increases your faith? You realize that our Heavenly Father watches out for us. He provides for us. He's always faithful. So we, I gave him a big tip, and we were really, really thankful to the Lord. Just really increased our faith. So the Lord has just used a few trials in our life um, to really make us more dependent upon Him. And um, I just want to encourage you. Trials, the Lord's will is that a trial is turned into a testimony. If I look back in my life, Every single testimony I have, really a good testimony, has actually come from a trial. So I want to encourage you, if you're in a trial, the Lord's going to turn that around, and it will become a great testimony. Amen? Hallelujah. So in the other aspect, um, some of the different ways that our Heavenly Father uh, conforms us to the image of Christ through trials that we experience. Also through training in Hebrews 12, Uh, Chapter 12, verse 5 and 6, it says, My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Now, I used to think this was more of a disciplinary verse, and I didn't realize the fullness of the meaning until just a little while ago I was reading this, and I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, As a son of God, of your heavenly Father, everything in your life that doesn't correctly represent your heavenly Father to those around you, those are the things that are getting chastened, trained, pruned. And that just kind of gave me a new understanding and appreciation for this verse because I realized that you and I, we're called to be the sons and daughters of God. He's growing us up in maturity so we could hold more of the resources of heavens in our life and to give it to those around us. 
And we have to be grown up in maturity. And, and a, a, the process is, is a chastening or a training. I like to use the word training process. How many here, how many parents have, have children that are two or three, four years old at the dinner table that they'll, they'll, um, they'll say, please, can you pass the peas, mommy? Do you have children like that? Or do they have to be trained how to say, please, thank you? They have to be trained. Are they still your children? Of course. As soon as they're born, they're your child. They're your son. They're your daughter. But there's a process of training them up to become mature, responsible adults. Uh, a three-year-old, you wouldn't give the responsibility to driving your vehicle, would you? No, because he's not a mature son or daughter yet. So it's the same thing in the kingdom realm. Our Heavenly Father is training us because there's kingdom resources He wants to give to us to bless the people around us. And there's a process we go through. It's called working on our character. It's called training. Uh, everything that does not represent our Heavenly Father, the things that we say, our attitudes, the mindset of or who we think we are apart from Him, all those types of things have to be cut off from our life so that we can truly have the mind of Christ. We can be conformed to the image of Christ. Amen? So we're in this training program. So the Lord uses trials and he's also training us because this is the Father's mission for us as his son and daughter. It's found in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is the, the mission that our Heavenly Father has given to us as his sons and daughters. It was the purpose that Jesus was manifested. It says here, this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. This word in the Greek actually means to loosen up. This word for destroy, it's a picture of like a captive held with chains and someone coming over with a key and loosening the chain. That's the that's word for destroy in this verse. It's a picture. It's the same word that's used in Matthew. When, it, when Jesus tells Peter, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So I want to encourage you this morning. In our DNA as a son and daughter of our heavenly father, in our DNA as his sons and daughters, we're called to release the captives from prison, to loose the chains, to bring peace with his anxiety, with his depression, to bring encouragement and hope, to bring love in the midst of anger. We're, as the sons and daughters of God, we're called to release the presence of the Lord wherever we go. In our families, in our church, in the streets, in the malls, at our job. And I want to encourage you this morning. We have the same calling on our life that Jesus did, um, that we might uh, destroy the works of the devil. The devil binds people. He puts condemnation on them. He binds them in sin, which leads to death. He binds them in all these different types of things, hopelessness, depression. We're surrounded by people like that. But you and I, as a son and daughter of our Heavenly Father, we've been given the keys to bring release to the captives, to destroy those works of the devil so that people can experience the freedom found in Jesus. Amen? Amen. So I want to encourage you this morning, wherever the Lord has uh, put you in your life, where he's placed you in your job, uh, the family you're in, uh, you have a unique set of relationships, people that I'll never meet. The Lord has placed you there for a reason, that as you grow as a son and daughter of our Heavenly Father, you can release heaven's resources. For example, as we begin to grow in knowing how much our Heavenly Father loves us, and we receive that love, and we begin to speak that love over our family and to those that we meet, the, hung, the world is hungry for love, aren't they? All around us in Niger, we have many Muslim friends. They're just hungry for love. They're caught in a religion that is trying to work, 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 and maybe they'll have a chance to go to paradise. And as we display the love of God, just really loving them, a lot of Muslims are coming to know Jesus, experiencing the saving power of Jesus. And it's the same thing here. As we experience the love of God, as we let it flow through our lives, it brings freedom to those around us. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 19, it says, The earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. I want to tell you this morning that all of creation is waiting. Is waiting for the moment the sons and daughters of God are released and manifested to bring freedom to the captives. Amen? All of creation is waiting for the revealing of the sons and daughters of God. I want to encourage you this morning. We have the same anointing and calling on our lives as Jesus did to destroy the works of the devil, to bring freedom to the prisoners, to bring freedom to the captives. 
We have been given the keys to loose these chains of darkness, to release the anointing of God's love, his power, his presence into every situation and circumstance around us. I want to encourage you today, as you go home today, this next week, all the relationships around you, I want to encourage you, you are a son and daughter of God. Your heavenly father loves you. He's well pleased with you. As we begin to say, Heavenly Father, what is your will for me today? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? What are you doing that I can be involved in? The Holy Spirit will begin to illuminate those things that day that he wants us to speak to those around us. And as we do that, we'll release more freedom and power in the presence of the Lord wherever we go. And the harvest is white. In Niger, West Africa, the harvest is white. In Elmira, New York, the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. And as we grow in our identity of knowing who we are as our Heavenly Father's sons and daughters, knowing that all of heaven's resources are available for us to release to those around us, we can begin to see more and more chains unshackled and loosed and prisoners set free. Amen? Hi, I'm Pastor John McConnell, and I'd like to welcome you today for watching our program. It's just amazing the technology we have today that we're able to live stream all around the world. And we'd like to give you an opportunity if you'd like to give towards this ministry. You can go online and be able to uh, follow the directions that are on there and be able to give to the ministry that you've been watching. So God bless you. We thank you for being part of Southside Alliance Church today.